This is the face of the Czech novelist Kafka. Franz Kafka, perhaps the most mysterious and enigmatic figure in the whole corpus of 20th century literature. Good evening. I have with me in the studio this evening Major H. E. Prevost Battersby. <laughs> Major Prevost Battersby, when one thinks of Franz Kafka, it's very rarely in the same breath as a major in the RASC. No. Well, as you know, um, I am the officer commanding the Curing Center for the used underwear of DOR <laughs> NCOs, which is situated down at Uckfield in Sussex, where we aim to handle something in the area of four or five tons gross used underwear per week. It's not a branch of the service one hears a great deal about. No, well, quite naturally. I think the army wants to keep it quiet. I mean, they can't put up on the posters join the army and see the used underwear of B.A.O.R. sergeants. I mean, it would attract entirely the wrong sort of chap. <clears throat> yes, yes. <laughs> Can we perhaps get back to Kafka? Yes, well, a story begins last Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, down at Duckfield, always spells vests and pants. And we, <laughs> we had this particular batch in from B.A.O.R. in Hamburg. And I was vetting it. I ought to explain that the undies in question come down on a conveyor belt here, you see. And I am here, and my son Major is here, you see. And I was vetting this stuff when my eye was caught uh, by a rather suspect pair of pants. So uh, I had my sergeant major winkle them off the belt so I could take a shorty at them. And I was very glad I did, because they weren't on the issue. They were, in fact a hitherto undiscovered pair of the underpants of Franz Kafka. And here you see them. 34 waist, 14 leg, early Czech Y fronts. <laughs> were you excited by this discovery? I, I suppose you were. Oh, I was tremendously excited. I mean, as you know, I've been officer commanding used underwear clearing center now for 27 years, uh, and there have been times when I felt I was flogging a wild goose. But uh, the discovery of these underpants really made it all worthwhile. It's the kind of thing that happens only once in a lifetime, if there. Well, can you be certain these are French Kafka's underpants? Uh, we can't be absolutely certain. No, you never can in a case like this. And immediately, of course, one thinks of the possibility of forgery. That <laughs> what we must ask ourselves in all seriousness is who would want to forge a pair of Kafka's underpants? <laughs> who would, would want, want to forge a pair of Kafka's <laughs> underpants? The answer comes pat, very few people indeed. Uh, I may be going out on a limb here, but I think the day of the underpant forger has gone for good. And we can all sleep safely in our beds at night. But as soon as these pants came into my hands, I had them sent off to various experts. Uh, Stephen Spender thinks he remembers them. Uh, as soon as Sir Kenneth Clark saw them, he said, those are Kafka's nicky knacks. I'll bet... <laughs> I'll bet my bottom dollar on it. And uh, where do we go from here? Well, I wouldn't myself have thought that Kafka's underpants were everybody's cup of tea, but you know, <laughs> I have been absolutely deluged with offers. I mean, the American universities, Cambridge combination rooms, uh, the Duke of Marlborough got on to mix. He wanted them for Blenheim, you know, where they have the best Winston Churchill yes. war as a baby. And I've had, I've had several impassioned letters from Miss Mary Quant. But... Uh, <laughs> I think she wants to wear them. <laughs> but one thing is absolutely certain, these underpants are not going to be allowed to leave the country. Major Previs Battersby, thank you. 